Hey guys, Sawyer at Sawyer's Lawn Care Service here. Uh, today we're going to get into installing some uh, straps on the landscape trailer, now mowing trailer. Uh, since, you know, our old design on the old trailer was we had boards with uh, these bolts that go into the ground. But they're kind of a pain in the butt because you got to take them out every single time you want to use it for mulch. Uh, so this time we're going to use some uh, cargo straps. Um, they're, they're really high quality straps. The, uh, I actually saw them on uh, Spencer's Lawn Care Service on their page. They recommended them on their uh, landscape or on their mowing trailers. So I'm gonna give them a try here. I bought eight of them. And uh, yeah, we're gonna hook them on to the trailer. And then we have to build a uh, basically wood extension on the back doors of the dump trailer. It, it works fine as is. I just kind of want to extend the back. So we fill our trailers with eight yards of mulch each. They're seven, they're seven K trailers uh, for the weight which means we, we can comfortably carry eight yards of mulch per trailer. But on the dump trailer, when we get it that, like with that much mulch in it, it starts pouring out the back and we have to use gloves um, to keep it, basically to push it so we keep it in there, uh, put the tarp kit on top. Uh, so I just wanted to just to hold the, the load in the dump trailer better, be it like sticks or mulch or whatever. So we're gonna extend that back uh, on both gates. I have an idea in my head of how I wanna do it. I already have all the lumber and all the hardware. Um, so we're gonna tackle that and then we're probably gonna put the uh, the tarp kit on the dump trailer Just so it's on there for the season and ready to go um, So just trying to knock out some more tasks, you know spring is coming. Uh, we're getting through the list You know pretty fast here. There's a couple other miscellaneous repair stuff. Uh, we got the vent track in it just got back from Mass Lepley. They did a great job They replaced the part on the loader. So now the vent track it, it should be working hundred um, percent All the loader issues like I said, we got the ramps the other day the loader's fixed, so that entire problem is water under the bridge. We are good to go, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. I mean, these things are a lot bigger. I think I got the, the giant ones as opposed to the smaller ones you can get. These are the cargo buckles. I got them on Zorro.com. They occasionally hand out uh, coupons for 20% off, so like normally these are $90 for a set. Uh, I think after tax, I got two sets. I, ordered, I did two different orders. The first order was $138 for four of these things, and then I did a second order for the same price. So, I mean, I got them for a really good price. They're supposed to be pretty awesome little things here. So effectively, the concept is supposed to be like kind of like a car uh, seat belt. You just tilt that up, you pull that out, you hook that to what load you have, and then when it's out, it, it, it self-tensions. And then it's hooked up and see like it self tensions like that. So your load should never be uh, loose or unsecured. And you can manually tension it if you need to. And yeah, like I said, I got eight of these. I'm just gonna put them on our tray over here that we're gonna use for mowing. Let's get the mowers warmed up here. I'm gonna put them in there just as a reference effectively. I've been loving the uh, the grill lift so far. Makes this gate so much so much easier. The uh, Chore Warrior wheelbarrow is still very much on my to-do list this spring to get this other wheelbarrow put together. Uh, so it's good to go. So we can use it this year. But for right now, I just got to, I'm still gonna use the bucket just for storage of all the items I need for this project. But that video is still coming. We're gonna get like 50 to 60 degree weather coming up here pretty soon, so I'll have some time to work on said projects without freezing my butt off. Right now, it's like 28 degrees outside, but I still gotta get this done while I have time, so. Spray painting is also on the agenda for the back tailgate. I got these two behemoth cans. These cans work really well. These are the turbo cans. Uh, that's for the tailgate, like I said, but uh, way too cold today for that. I'm gonna put those to the side. And let's see, I need to get boards out. Those are for the dump trailer. Let me get some gloves here. As soon as that sun's not shining on my project area anymore, it's getting chilly. I 
I usually use like two by tens by eights for most of my projects. This time we're gonna try uh, these uh, one by eights by eights. Uh, since it's gonna be on the dump trailer, uh, like I'm gonna actually attach it to the gate itself on both sides. Um, I just want it to be as light as possible. Thick enough to do its job, but light enough that it doesn't like, you know, weigh down the gate. So. All right, time to get the mowers loaded. All right, so I know I went over this in my other video, but the general concept here that I'm going with is the two mowers. I know like you're supposed to balance your weight better than how it's balanced right now. But uh, basically the beggars will sit like that, push more, We'll kind of hang out over here somewhere. And then the front, it, as the day goes on, is just gonna become basically like a grass bin. Um, and we'll just fill up, we'll just dump all the baggers into the front. I mean, now I'm not reinventing the wheel or anything. I mean, people have thrown grass in their trailers forever, usually on a tarp. I'm just hoping it doesn't warp the boards. It's only gonna get ever sit in there, you know, until the evening time, or if it's really rainy. The most it would sit in there is like two or three days with some of the grass, but we're gonna try to do it like, you know, all the bagged properties on one day and the non-bagged properties on the other day. So basically, like if we if we bag them all on like the last day or something, um, or the last two days of the route, then we can just unload it all at the same time with the vent track. So that'll just make things a lot easier than trying to do it every single day. So effectively, yep, that'll be a grass bin, push mower, other mowers. And the idea is I'm gonna hook them up so we can hook onto these tie down spots so I think I'm gonna put one back here. So two, then up here somewhere, and make it four. And then here somewhere, I mean, I'm gonna put them on this outside. Right here will be six. And I was gonna say some for the dump trailer, but I think I might just put them up here and do something like in the front and put seven and eight over here, just so we can secure other loads forward. I know it's kind of funky, you know, securing them high, but I don't, I don't want anything in this box. That's why I do all carriage bolts. And I'm gonna show you inside here, every single thing I mount, all has, uh, it's all carriage bolts. It's so we can use the Steiner and the Ventrac buckets in here to easily get out dirt, gravel, and mulch. And it's been working well so far, so I just wanna keep it that way. Everything's, everything's gonna be installed with carriage bolts. Uh, I should've gone to a bulk supplier for how much I buy, but you know, when you get into a project, you don't know you're gonna go get 20 bolts, 40 washers as you're putting it together in your head. Um, but it's fine. I mean, you know, I try to buy bulk when I can. And when I can't, we just go to the big box stores. So yeah, we're gonna get started here, trying to find some placement. So we're not gonna go like crazy accurate with how we're installing these things. We're just gonna kind of go for it at certain points. The main idea, the main thing is just to watch where the bolts for this thing come down and the screws on the inside. I just want to overlap it. There's so many screws and bolts in this thing. Um, so we're going to try to kind of sit like this. I know it's kind of funky, but when you're on the inside, then all you have to do is lift that up. I just want to get over it. Oh, and open it all the way. <laughs> About to say. So it's going to just sit like this. You just open it up. Hook it on there. The auto tensions, you just close it. If you need to tension it more, you just go like that. I know the wall moves a little bit here, but I mean, for all we need, that's gonna be perfect. If I need to secure it more, I mean, it, it, it should be plenty fine. I mean, it's just a, a safety thing. I've never put straps on my mowers in the other trailer. I just put boards on the floor. So this is just an abundance of caution. We'll put it that way. So. It'd help if I open it up all the way. All right. Well, let's just dive on in here, eh? Now I got four inch bolts just because 
Um, whenever I tend to get smaller ones, they just, they'd be, they're just a little too short and then I run into problems. So for this, I went for a four inch bolt and there's plenty of room up on top there. If it's gonna stick out, I'm just gonna run a sawzall through it and cut them off and make them smooth. So I'm fine with that. So let's see, I wanna give that thing plenty of space. So we wanna go kinda of like about an inch past it. Like I said, I'm not too crazy about going super accurate. We're just gonna... Silver Sharpies are amazing. Working on steel, working on wood. That looks good to me. We're just gonna do a quick concept one. So our setup for this is gonna be carriage bolt. These things are awesome. I think they're called uh, torque washers. They just have little spikes on them. They just grab right onto the wood so it can't slip at all. And it's nice if you just kinda hammering it a little bit. It gives it a really nice grab. Like how that's looking. I am going to go grab a impact for this and a hammer. I got the trusty old Dewalt Ugga Dugga. That's all set in there. She's on two. sure it doesn't interfere with the inner setup at all. Nice and straight. I just don't want to push into the cable section too much, but it should be fine. All right, now you get a quick demo here. It says it's supposed to be 72 inches. So basically you just take this, you just raise it up there. That loosens the belt. You stick it in there, lower this down. If you need it to be tighter, you can actually do a little bit of a ratchet action there. And yes, I know this is moving a little bit. Um, there's actually uh, quite a few U-bolts on the side of here. That on the very end. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna torque it down too much, but that should do what I need it to do. And when you're done, Like so. And yeah, I know those straps are kind of hanging out there, but it doesn't bother me that much. Yeah, but it really starts bothering me at all. So I have, like I said, um, the U-bolts like this. I can put one right here. I just, it was for a matching aesthetic. I didn't actually originally plan to have straps going across here. So, I mean, it has a little, just a little bit of play to it. A um, little bit, but uh, I can always add another U-bolt if it becomes a problem with not being able to secure the load. But it seems like it's not gonna be that big of a problem. All right, so same thing on this side as with the other. I'm just going to mark it fast.
and you know we will have more actual landscaping videos in the future we're just on the precipice of spring uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes wrong in the background that's why we have to charge what we charge for our landscaping services um, but this is just stuff that has to be done in order to you know run a landscape business so trailers need maintenance trying to you know adjust to new technologies make things more efficient you go along and you find stuff that's you know not safe or could be done better could be done more efficiently and this is one of those things because yes we could use ratchet straps but for some people um you know when you if you have employees coming in and out for like seasonal work you want stuff to be as simple as possible so you can definitely teach a person how to use a ratchet strap but you know so some people don't realize is when, when you're not around that stuff all the time, like a lot of landscapers are, and you're bringing on people for seasonal work, they're not used to using that kind of stuff. And you can tell them a bunch of times, but if they're just there for a year or two, sometimes it just, it just doesn't click all the things you're trying to teach them. So like, especially when you're working for other people, um, you know, you can have, a, some people can have a lot of anxiety and stuff. So if you want, you, you know, you have to make it a, a nice work environment for your employees for them to stick around or want to stick around you want them to have a good time yeah you're all there to make money but no one wants to be in a situation where they don't know how to do their job it's not explained well it's difficult there's a million things they have to learn and people are expecting them to know it the first time it's just life's not that way So the easier the better, you know? And I'd say this is pretty easy. It's basically a seat belt. Good to go. I'm not gonna lie, it's getting really cold as the day goes on, so hoodie is going on for sure. Now this one, I really gotta decide where I want it. Uh, sorry, somebody's driving by a sports car. So I don't want this to interfere with the current racks, but I also want to be able to secure the mower. So if I put this up here and don't put one in the middle, that might actually be the key to it. Because like I said, I don't want the mowers to be all the way back. And I want this to be able to secure them wherever they are. And right now, I don't know if you can see in there, the hooks are actually gonna be probably forward most of the time. So if I just install this sucker, you know, right back here, that should pretty much be fine with that. I might figure out a way to mount it forward in the future. But for right now, I think, I think we're just gonna put one right here. I might even put a couple of these, like if, if I only use six of them. See, the only, thing, the only thing is, so here's my problem. Let me show you this. So I'm gonna use these straps for this guy. Um, we can use a bungee cord or something for the mower. We've always done that in the past. I might just throw something like a, I don't know, like between that hook and that hook, just a rubber bungee. Cause I mean, the mower is not gonna go anywhere, but also I don't want to rock it around. Um, we use the push mower a lot. Uh, I just don't have anything to secure that with. So I might be able to do it with one of the ones on the top up there. So put basically one, two, or basically the three, third and fourth one here, fifth and sixth one up front. I'd say the last two for the dump trailer, so. Let's just see what we got here. Now these ones, I'm gonna go lower than the back ones. It's, it's not really gonna matter that much. It's just these aren't going over a gorilla lift, so. Now these ones are gonna be really secure because we actually have a welded angle iron piece right here. 
me unhook you here so you can check this out. Yeah, right here. My father-in-law welded that on there. So effectively, this one's going to go. Oops, I need to remember to put that all the way up. It's really easy when you step on the mower. It's too loose. Let's give it the old tighten down. And I wonder, even, like I said, I mean, you can do it on the fronts or the backs. I'm not a super big fan of that bunched angle there, the way I have it set up. But I mean, as long as you watch the strap when it goes back in. You know, we can even angle that back, actually. Let's see. There we go. Kind of bothers me being at an angle, but I mean, I think it's going to naturally go there anyway. There we go. Just kind of doing a quick dummy test here on the ones that I have. Push this back a little bit too. They are really tight in there, but you can still play around with them a little bit. So yeah, all the way open, um, lets you set it wherever you want. Then you can ratchet it. And that's, I mean, that looks fine for uh, road use, you know. This, the road's not gonna fly forward. That's what we want. I can also use these for, uh, I also have them set up for so I can use them for like the vent track and stuff, so. All right, now we gotta do the uh, one on the other side. what I'm doing here basically these torque washers you know they'll grab really tight on there give a nice steel surface for the torque washer or the the carriage bolt to sit in see so it's kind of give the teeth a head start Super, super simple. And it just grabs right in there. And basically, you know, we can grab all these from the inside. That's again, I'm gonna get rid of, like I said, get rid of that thread that's on there. Once I get all these on here. And you just pop them up fast. Should be a really easy, secure system. Just gonna buzz them all out with the grinder fast here.
And I know the grinder disc is absurdly small and that's not super safe, but I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to get inside of these things with a full on uh, grinder blade. So I'm actually gonna swap this out. All the uh, connectors are done, but for the next project um, I'm doing today, I'm gonna have this swapped out, so. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how that looks right there. Those two you can secure there. These two can secure here or whatever load you need to do over here. <clears throat> and when you're on the inside, you just simply push down, tighten up a little bit. I kind of loosened them all up when I was attaching them. And that's there. And when we don't have any grass in here, you should be able to use one of these if it goes far enough. You know, you can like attach it up there or whatever. It's just to stop from moving around. If you want to go one extra, and this one over here, let's see what reach you get on here. So you can secure, secure something out to here. That's barely without touching the plywood on top, so it shouldn't tear on it too much. Can't quite reach over here with that one. Like I said, these are just auxiliary ones. That would do the trick there, just to make sure it doesn't move anywhere. We can fill up grass over here and move it back as needed, which, I mean, at that point, if you have that much grass in here, um, the mower is not gonna be able to move between the, you know, the rights and uh, the wall. So, yep, then on detach, Can do the old one hand die and left hand, but this is perfectly fine to do with just my right hand. Super simple, super fast. That mower is good to go. Now whenever, whenever we first hop in the trail or whoever's in front can just get the front ones. I mean, they're kind of hard to miss so you can't really drive off with them attached. Same thing. Loosen up, close. Oh, that one already had up. I didn't put it down yet. All right, loosen up. Close. All right. Well, I'm going to put these mowers away. This trailer is done. I was gonna do four of them, like I said, but um, I don't think it's gonna be necessary. I can reach everything in here. I'm actually gonna use, I think, the other ones on the dump trailer project. I just gotta find a good spot for them because um, we can use it to secure the bed edger when we put it in that trailer. So give me a second, be right back. Gonna do some trailer swapping. All right, just had the slightest delay in plans. Wanted to go start the truck to get hooked up to the dump trailer and the battery is dead. So you might have to go get that tested. Some oil on top of this thing. Hopefully it didn't leak into the internal components of that. Let's go get the uh, power cord from the dump trailer. Let's steal it off of there. You gotta watch you don't run them over, but uh, having cords out in your trailer yard where you have everything parked, it's kind of convenient. Once we get a permanent place, might have a better solution for that, like recoiling cords on spools. You can get them, I mean, most of them for indoor use only, but. All right. Was it 12 volt? Okay. Uh, 
Okay. So that, I think that's the top of the battery. See the battery cell, what is that? Cold cranking. I had their battery replaced once on this, so it shouldn't be the battery. I think something just drained it, but it is dead as a doornail. We're just gonna set it for start. I think we've got a good connection. I'm just gonna let her run once I get it started. Let it recharge to see if we have any actual issues. Gonna give her a second. All right, well, it is getting extremely cold outside. Um, it's getting dark. It's like probably 18 degrees out here right now. Uh, so I mean, we're gonna have 50 to 60 degree days this entire next week. So no sense in sitting out here in the cold, trying to fart around with the truck. Um, it's still dead. So I'm just gonna actually just slow charge the battery with the battery charger and we'll pick it up on the uh, next day I can get out here. And we'll continue on with this, uh, with this project. All right, so we were able to get the truck started and leave it on the charger for a little while there and then switch the charger back to uh, starting mode, which just gives it more power. And the truck did get started. I ran it for 20 minutes, uh, turned it off, started it back up. It's running fine. I think the battery just got low or something might have happened with this, uh, you know, with all these temperature drops. I mean, we went from like 55 degrees down to 17 degrees at night one night. I don't know if that caused it. The battery's only a couple years old. Uh, if it causes any more problems when I go back out there um, and work on the project again, then maybe I'll look into getting that battery replaced. But as of right now, I think it's working fine. Um, so, but yeah, I'm happy we got that first trailer done, the second trailer. I'm actually kind of glad that it got um, delayed on it because uh, I was originally going to bolt the uh, wood onto the back trailer. Uh, look at the back, the, basically the, the double doors. But um, after I came back in the house, I thought about it for a little bit and I think I'm actually just gonna get more um, steak, like basically, uh, trailer stake pockets and just so we can remove it so if we the times we basically have to close the trailer and load over the top because it's overflowing out the backside uh, like stump grindings and stuff I want to be able to slide those doors off and on easily um, so we can still get the bucket over the top of it and uh, I think that'll be the way to go doing the stake pockets so yeah looking forward to doing that project that'll probably be I will probably won't be able to get out there for a couple days but I'm thinking I'm gonna try to get to that project on Monday uh, so yeah, just stay tuned and uh, appreciate you watching today and stay tuned for the next video.